All right, we are here at my tiny worm den, and it has been 14 days since we were in here last. And when we were in here last, the worms had spread out pretty nicely. They had eaten that last feeding. So we upped the amount of food that we put in here. And right away, as soon as I kind of brush my fingers through here, I'm seeing some worms. And there's a big one. I don't know if I got them or not, but um, they are on the surface right here. Here's one right there. Well, there's about 500 in here, and we're gonna dig through the feeding zone to see if we can find them and see if there's any food in here. But they are depositing castings, which is fantastic, and I see the castings on the top. And yep, right away, we're seeing some throughout, which is good. A lot of bedding, and all this bedding here is food. As one of the commenters said, all bedding is food, but not all food is bedding. So never be afraid to put a lot of bedding in here. And here's the first kind of piece of food that I see, and it's a strawberry, the leaves of the strawberry. They usually take a while to get that. They'll eat the strawberry flesh pretty readily. But let's go into this corner and see how it's doing here. And lots of worms just throughout, which is good. They are spread all throughout here. So they're not bundled up. They're not you know, worried about anything. They're enjoying their home. And right here at the end of my finger is a cocoon. And these are all red wigglers. So and it's a dark cocoon, which means it's a relatively older cocoon. But that is fantastic. Make sure I have it off my finger. We'll dig around and aerate here. And I like what I'm seeing. The moisture level is great. There's no pooling at the bottom. It just seems a little damp. So that's good. And again, more worms. Just good looking worms in here. Good stuff. Good stuff. I'm so happy to see cocoons because when I sifted this out, I didn't do a cocoon nursery or anything with it. So a lot of the cocoons probably made it into my storage where eventually they'll get baited out. But let's kind of go through here. And here's the feeding zone. So you know, more higher concentration of worms in here. You can see several by my thumbs right there. Not quite a worm ball because I don't see any food that is left in here from the last feeding so far, but a lot of casting surrounding this bedding, which is fantastic. Oh, really good, just really good for two weeks in. And I will tell you, having the right number of worms for your bin is key. For this tiny worm bin, which is just a three gallon Rubbermaid mm. roughneck tote, 500 worms is adequate. For most worm bins, I would say probably around 2,000 worms, but 500 is good for this. And we'll see if they keep, look at that big guy right there. We'll see if they keep um, reproducing. And you can see, I think you can see the orange kind of tip of their tails right here. There's two of them right there. It's one of the signs of a red wiggler. Let's dig into this corner and kind of go through the bedding. This is, it's just looking great. For two weeks in, this is where, where you want to be. And I put more of the um, castings in. It's kind of the used bedding and castings. This is a, looks like a bit of a, the end of maybe a banana. Yeah, the flower end of a banana right there. But I had a little bit more um, bedding from my previous time running this, a little bit more castings than I usually put in, usually just a handful. So this looks a little bit, maybe a little bit more aged than a typical two week bin looks, but just really happy with the moisture level, happy with the fact that the worms have spread out and they're all over. So we'll dig in this one last corner here and then I'll get through the center just to make sure I kind of went through the feeding zone and we're gonna test the limits of what they will eat. So maybe a tiny bit drier over here, but again, <laughs> giant worms again. For red wigglers, this is pretty, pretty thick, pretty happy worm right there. Pretty awesome. Let's just kind of get in the middle again, see if we see any of that celery or strawberry or lettuce. And I just don't see any of it. So let's see if we can put a pretty big feeding zone in here. So I'm just gonna kind of set it up and I'm gonna add more bedding because again, this, 
This uh, bedding right now looks pretty full, but there's a lot of air pockets in here. Short, certainly the corrugated cardboard has air pockets, and as they turn it to castings, it's gonna shrink down. It's important to keep adding bedding. Again, this, I think it was the commenter that said, all bedding is food, but not all food is bedding is exactly right. All right, so here's what we had in mind. Here is an apple, a little bit of a tomato top, We've got some potato peel, strawberries, lettuce, lettuce head. Um, I think there may be another apple core in here. So lots of good stuff for them to eat. And this will test them. Certainly the apple cores are take a little bit longer. So we've got those in there. Uh, tomato, somewhere in between. Strawberry, the pink part of the strawberries are certainly fast food for these worms. So we'll put those in there and we'll see how they do. In fact, if, if it takes them a little bit longer, we may see some worm balls the next time we, we check on it, but I'm just trying to see what their, what their limits are. Where are they? I'm kind of leading them um, this stage in the bin to find out how much I should be feeding each week. And if we come back next time, and I'll put the liquid in, if we come back next time and they have not eaten every, everything, then I know, okay, let's just put a little bit less in but we'll see what they do with this feeding and that will help us judge the feedings ahead of that. So I'm gonna just put just a little bit more bedding on top and then we'll go in with our normal coffee, which for me, I do little Keurig coffees uh, each morning. So very little coffee comes in here and it just fills up, fills up. But this is on average been sitting here probably about three weeks and it gets moldy and you know, that kind of thing. So there's microbes brewing in here. It's a little, a little filter for it that I don't really use, but I had some extra, so I did. There we go. A little bit of coffee for them. And the coffee is just another finely graded food source. And then this is the eggshells that I use as grit for them. It aids in their digestion and also helps my garden. And then we'll cover this up. And this is my, kind of my, DIY tiny worm bin that I showed how to build. And I've got two other worm bins on my channel. And if you subscribe, which is free on YouTube, you'll be able to see the playlist and you can follow each of those worm bins along from start to finish castings. So you can kind of see the progression of a bin, but let's just kind of bury this with this extra bedding that's on here. And certainly if you like this video and enjoy it, give me a Thumbs up, hit the like button, I'd appreciate that. But, so this is the third feeding, day 14, for the tiny DIY worm bin. And we will continue to follow this along and see how they do with this feeding. So if you are running in parallel with this worm bin and you are at the same point, maybe give it some more food and see if you can kind of find the limits of how your worm bin is doing. So I hope everybody's having a great day and happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.